Since it's so early in a 2023, there hasn't been much game releases. There's been a big release here and there, like Hogwarts Legacy and God of War Ragnarok, but nothing noteworthy outside of those. But there have been some announcements that I've been excited about. It could be something completely new, or just a sequel to an already existing game. So just like Donkey did, I'm going to be listing the games I'm most excited for for the rest of 2023. I also won't be including games that I'm personally not excited for. For example, Redfall. From looking at the trailers and promotions, it looks like a fine game. It could be bad. It could be good. Personally, just don't really care about it too much. Also, some games might not have been confirmed for 2023, but seem pretty close to. Also, if a game gets delayed, that's not my fault as well. It isn't really in a specific order, so let's just start from the bottom to the top. At first, I actually have Five Nights at Freddy's Plus. Now, I'm not really too fond of the Five Nights at Freddy's series anymore. I still follow with it a little bit, though. Even though this is a fan project, though, it seems like it would take the main game and turn it into a new direction. I made a whole video about this. Uh, it it's good. You should go watch it. I know that right now, mascot horror is a really oversaturated genre. Many people say that, and I agree with it too. This game generally looks scary, unlike the last few games. And I'm just genuinely excited to know when this game will come out. Hopefully this year. Definitely seems like it, from what I see. So far, it looks like Fiznom's doing a good job working on this, and he won't stop anytime soon. Next up, I actually have Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League. I don't really care too much about DC other than Batman, but this actually looks like a pretty good game. There was a little bit of a controversy with this game because of the battle pass shown in the trailer, but the actual game seems pretty decent. The game is a local and online co-op shooter with movement that I can compare to probably Sunset Overdrive. And unlike the recently released Gotham Knights, this is made by Rocksteady Studios, the same company that made the absolutely incredible Batman Arkham series. Four games that have absolutely taken away hours of my life. So far, there are signs that makes it seem like it could go wrong, and maybe it will, but it looks pretty promising so far. But we'll just have to see. The planned release date is scheduled to be May 26th, which isn't too far away. Just like Five Nights at Freddy's Plus, Carlson isn't confirmed to be in 2023, but it definitely sure seems like it could happen. This is made by the YouTuber Danny, who's made Muck and Crab Game, two games that were pretty much made as jokes, and to a certain extent, this game has the same kind of humor that those games have but this is supposed to be a first person shooter and also a parkour game some movement that resembles games like titanfall while some creating its own there's a demo currently on itch.io but we're still waiting for the full release it seems like it should happen soon we're just hoping this one may surprise you all but for number seven i have alan wake 2. recently for christmas i got a steam deck and while i was playing on it I tried the original Alan Wake, and also its follow-up expansion, American Nightmare. I finished both of them, and I absolutely loved them, but I felt like I wanted more. And it's been 10 years, and now we finally got something. There actually has not been any gameplay shown or anything else for Alan Wake 2. Just this minute-long cinematic trailer, which looks really good by the way. If you never played the original, the gameplay is kinda like Resident Evil and Max Payne because it's made from the same creators as the original first two Max Payne games. There is an easter egg showing Alan in Remedy's most recent game, Control, so it's showing a possible universe connection. Still, I'm very excited to see the story continue, and I'm also very excited for the gameplay part of it as well. Sadly for me though, it's announced as an Epic Games Store exclusive, so I guess you win some, you lose some. This one may also come as a surprise to some people, but next up is Payday 3. Around Christmas time, they showed off this little teaser trailer. Before, they'd only shown a few little pictures. But now we get to see New York City, the place where we'll do all the heists. I started playing Payday 2, and it's probably become my most played game in the past year. 
It's a very solid online co-op shooter, however, definitely does have some problems and, in a way, can feel a little bit outdated. Looking at the teaser trailer though, it seems like the graphics are going to be improved and it sounds like the gameplay and overall mechanics are also going to be improved as well. So that means going louder stealth should be way more fun now. Both the trailer and the teaser images seem really exciting, showing what the game will look like. And it's crazy knowing how good the graphics look compared to Payday 2. It seems like they've made enough money from Payday 2 DLC to fund the development of Payday 3 after the, um, incident. But that generally though, I'm just excited to play this when it comes out. Hopefully we can see gameplay sometime soon. So I'll see if it's really worth trying out. When was the trailer for this game made again? Dead Island 2 is probably the oldest game in this video because it was announced all the way back in 2014 and we only got this trailer for a long while. To be fair, it's probably one of the best video game trailers ever made, but still, felt like it was going to get this game was going to get canceled. Basically, the company behind the original left the studio to make Dying Light. I never played the original Dead Island games because I thought they just looked like other mediocre zombie games, but I might try them soon. Looking from the gameplay trailer, it looks pretty good. It's another open world zombie game, and it looks like the mechanics are going to be pretty fun. Don't really have much more to say, but yeah, that's really it. Set five years after Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, Jedi Survivor is going to release, I think, later this month. I won't talk about this song too long either because... I actually haven't finished Jedi Fallen Order yet, but I probably will soon up to the run up to this game. It seems like that there's going to be great new gameplay features and also a brand new story as well as some great new enemies. This is a pretty common pick, but next up is Resident Evil 4. The original Resident Evil 4 is a masterpiece, and so is the 2019 Resident Evil 2 remake. Now people get to experience the past with new graphics, new gameplay, and a lot more features. Of course the story and all that stuff will still stay the same, but it's just interesting seeing Resident Evil 4 from a new glance like this. Right now is a pre-order, it's one of the best selling games, so people are definitely excited for this. I'm excited to play this sometime soon. Hopefully it will be good, I already know. Actually, editor's note here, while I'm currently editing this, it comes out in less than a day. So, Yep, it's almost here. I have never actually played Silent Hill 2 before, but I have always wanted to though because it is considered the most influential horror game of all time. Even more than games such as Amnesia, Bioshock, Dead Space, and even Resident Evil. I wanted Silent Hill 2 on PC, but I know it's an old game and it probably won't be up to snub for today's standards, but I wanted the true Silent Hill not some lazy old remaster. But then out of nowhere, Konami and Bloober team announced a Silent Hill remake coming to all modern platforms. People were a bit mixed at first because it's being made by Bloober team who haven't really made the best horror games. They've made stuff like the Blair Witch game and also Lairs of Fear, which surprisingly enough is also getting a remake as well this year. But still, I'm just generally excited to play this. I feel like it's not getting the hype that it deserves. It seems like, finally, Konami can live up to our standards. Back when it came out, I played Spider-Man on the PlayStation 4. I never played Spider-Man Miles Morales because I wasn't really interested in getting a PlayStation 5. But it's on PC now, so I'll probably try it soon. But I remember, when playing Spider-Man, I absolutely loved it. Like most people did. But it just looks cool seeing him play as both of them. Not only that, but we also get a brand new villain as well. Someone who wasn't in the original, and I was disappointed wasn't in there. Venom. I'm just so glad that he's finally here. So those are my most anticipated games for the rest of 2023. Thank you guys for watching. I know that this wasn't like some grand review that you guys were probably waiting for. Trust me, I'm almost done with Security Breach, so I could do a review on that. It's just such a slog to get through. I was thinking more of some other games I could review. I already have ideas, but I'm not really going to say I'm here because I want to keep it a secret. I'm sorry that it's been a while since I uploaded. 
Sometimes I forget my YouTube channel even exists. And I've just been busy with school and stuff. But yeah, hopefully I could do a grander and better video soon. And I'll see you guys there.